how to trade Australian racing on Betfair's exchange. So before we get stuck into specific details, the tutorial contents and why you should stay to the end of this tutorial. I'm going to start off by briefly overviewing what is the shortest route to successful trading. It's very important to me. It's something that I did wrong early on. I went the long way around and there's a very hard way to do things or there's an easier way. There's a shorter path. So I'm going to talk about how you can do that if you're looking into exchange trading now. Then I want to talk about Aussie influences and indicators within the Australian exchange markets, what's important and why that is um, and why you should bear that in mind before you do anything. And then we're going to get stuck into the important part that probably most of you are here for, which is the three successful approaches to trading Australian horse racing markets with lots of on-screen recordings and examples talking you through myself doing stuff on screen and why I'm doing it. Those three are broken down into momentum swing trading, lower turnover strategy and short term turnover bias as I've called it there. Now before we go into the final detail, quick 20 seconds or so to let people know who I am if you've just come across this channel for the first time. My name's Carl Berry, I'm a professional Betfair trader, I have been for a substantial amount of time now, in fact I quit my job just over 10 years ago and I've never looked back. You may have seen me in Betfair's market material on their homepage, the learning directory, um, speaking at traders events or even uh, more recently on an interview with Betfair Australia. So if you enjoy the content on this channel and you find it of value, please subscribe. Uh, make sure you tap the like button down below. Just recently we had a little bit of nasty stuff, people leaving very nasty comments and lots of thumbs down as soon as videos are uploaded on the YouTube channel. So if you want to help me uh, counter that then please tap the like button now. Uh, also I've got courses on my website for more advanced deeper learning on exchange trading and various strategies you can use there. Now, this video, I'm gonna provide you quite a bit of value. Um, I'm quite happy to answer any questions you may have after watching the video in the comments. Please drop them down below afterwards. Uh, within a few hours of publish is usually the best time to get a snap answer from me straight away, but I will endeavor to come back and check them in the future. So the shortest route to successful trading, um, and basically the answer is to be efficient, obviously. Um, a lot of people, are probably aware of Pareto's principle, something that I often think about and I relate heavily to exchange trading, which basically said, you know, for 20% of your effort is usually 80% of your results. And alternatively, the other way around, people usually spend a lot of their time and effort, or 80% or so, which actually yields 20% of their results. Now you wanna be the dark blue portion on the left and the dark blue portion on the right, not the light blues. When I started out, when I first started in the exchange markets, I probably spent a lot of time in the light blue area and it didn't do me any good. So don't do that because that's not the shortest route to successful trading. Now, what is the most efficient uh, place to start? Well, another favorite quip of mine, if you like, is uh, Capablanca, the chess uh, champion, grandmaster for eight years or so, had a famous quote where he said, you know, if you intend to win, you must first study the end game. And that's what I'm talking about here. So you need to study the strategy, the approach, the understanding, marking influences, conditions that control the market, that stop and limit it in places, um, times, how that affects things, the different relationships between time and market activity, human psychology within the market, how people think, why they act, because people are creatures of habit. They routinely do the same things at the same time over and over. Um, why that happens, where that happens, and then of course thinking about your own executional risks and how you behave as a creature of habit within the markets. But we'll come on to all of that in a second with the three different uh, strategies to give you a bit of a leg up and get you started, but they are absolutely crucial. You wanna sit back and think about how things work first because the hardest part of trading is done before you click a mouse or even look at a market. It's just understanding what the hell is going on. That is the efficient route. Not sitting there looking at flashing numbers, hoping, clicking, trying to relate things and you know seeing patterns in your head that quite frankly are just random distribution within the markets. It also reminds me of uh, another favorite quote of mine, I've got a few, um, I think it was Abraham Lincoln that said it, you know, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I'll spend the first four sharpening the ax. Trading is just like that. Making money takes seconds, that is the last two hours if you like, that is the part that people get excited about um, and want to do. They're not so keen on the first four hours of sharpening their axe or you know, working out their strategy and what's actually happening in the market because many markets are quite unique as well. But that's where the hard work is done, in the preparation and then of course sticking to the plan when you do it. Don't be one of those people that are just you know, like a magpie looking at the shiny thing the last two hours, not willing to do the first part. 
So this takes us straight on to Aussie influences and conditions. There's a lot of things that will influence the market, um, but there's a few key things that are very important that everyone needs to get in their head straight away. First of all, live information of all kinds affect the markets, particularly live streaming and live video. So you see the red marker on the screen there, and um, you can see some of these race courses have live video, some don't. Already I know straight away, before I've done anything, that these tracks are going to be more interesting to the general public, there's going to be more money turned over, and where there's more money turned over and more money matched, there's more opportunity to get a trade through the market. It's as simple as that. So from the outset, they are a target for me. Secondly, I've pointed out Flemington there, one of the more popular tracks in Australia. Um, so it's good to know which tracks are popular. Um, and again, they're usually the televised ones uh, because it increases turnover and the time as well. So that one at the top there's got a green dot. Uh, that would have been the next live race at the time of the snapshot. But typically, uh, the closer you get to the start of the race, the more money is turned over. And therefore, there is you know more opportunity and less risk for putting your trade through the market, as you'll see in the latest strategies that we share. Um, but also, you should bear in mind with each race card, typically, wherever it is in the world, the middle segment of the race card is usually the highest quality. Focus on those areas and you're already off to a better start than trying to trade some, some scrappy markets where there's very, very low turnover. Now, if we briefly look at some of those tracks and their turnover on screen, you'll see exactly what I mean. So looking at the tabs there, uh, we've got Bathurst, 7.9 thousand uh, pounds British matched on that one. Uh, Flemington, 66,000, a lot more. Gosford, 500 quid. Dolby, 650. Muffetville, two grand, and Alice Springs, 75 quid. So Alice Springs was a lot further back in time compared to the others there, uh, so that will be a factor that's influencing that. However, it's important to realise that there is a significant difference in turnover volumes before you even start on these markets. Okay, so once we've bared that in mind, we need to select our strategy. Now, the first one we're going to cover is the low turnover strategy. And I'm going to show you three different races that I've traded in the Australian markets here using the lower turnover strategy. Now, a lot of people see lower turnover as a problem initially, and it can be a problem overall in terms of scaling up the profits. However, the good side is it applies to every single race. Um, pretty much every single market on Betfair, to be honest, at one time or another, uh, excluding the extremely high volume ones. But, you know, it's great for Australian horse racing markets. It's also the easiest strategy to, to implement too. You don't need a huge balance to do it. So we look at the market here. We've got a minute and a half down to the start. There's no live coverage, as I've just pointed out in the previous sections of this video. We're at Alice Springs, which was one of the lowest liquidity markets on the card. So I'm just looking to find positions within the market where there is activity going in a specific direction and there is you know there's going to be low liquidity in the market so we've just seen the spike of money go in there and I'm offering bets in the market outside of the traded prices now when a spike of money comes into the market it will often bounce back and go for, forward and the line the the lines the market rarely moves in one single direction so although i could see the intent was for this price to drift it's now bounced back in um, and I've had my position in the market where there's low liquidity, so it's easy to get matched. You know, those big spikes that basically go against the grain is what I'm talking about, are going to pick up my bets and I'm going to be taken in the market where I offered a position. Now, it all happened very quickly. It's very low stakes. We've made about 30% or 25% of our stake there overall total. But just through seeing that little spike of genuine money coming into the market as it starts to form, um, things picking up in the final minute or so because it's a low liquidity market. I've offered a position. Um, the, the market has then bounced back because prices rarely go in one straight line. It'd be brilliant if they did. And our position's been taken in a favourable position and therefore we're left with a very small amount of profit. Again, it's nothing to get too excited about, but it's low liquidity, it's easy to do, and you don't need a huge balance to do it. So next race... We've got another one here. This is one of the very early races at Gosford. Um, I'm looking at the market, trying to weigh up uh, what I think is happening in the market. It's always important to have some kind of opinion, although not to be too fixed and to be flexible with that opinion. It looks like there's a little bit of back money coming in on the favourite here. So chances are I'd prefer to be on the back side of the book at this point in time. Uh, the second favourite's drifting a little. But when the activity, the genuine activity pop, pops up, 
Um, it confirms what I'm actually thinking in the market. I'm basically just looking to plug those gaps in the market where there is very small amounts of money. And then when uh, the pushback happens, if you like to call it pushback, against the price in the true direction, we get filled and we're left in a favourable position. Now, I may do it on the lay side of the second favourite here, or I may do it on the back side of the favourite, I would guess. I did record this at an earlier date, so I couldn't tell you exactly. So there it is. I offered a position of 4.8. Quick spike, matched it, and then back out of 4.9. And I'm getting in position to do it again. 25 seconds down to the start, which is, you know, with these very low liquidity, low turnover markets, the money comes really, really late. So you don't want to be getting involved too early. In doing that, you get yourself in trouble. There you go. So the price has come in. You can see the true activity is poured into the market very late. I've offered back bets in the market. I haven't chased them down too much. It's gone in my favor. I've offset a small position uh, in terms of the lay side of the book, which is also being filled by this low, uh, the, you know, the high spikes going into the low, low liquidity, which basically means several ticks away from the traded touch price bets do get matched. However, you don't want to do it on extremely large stakes because you'll overexpose yourself in the markets. One more then, Dolby this time, uh, race five. You can see there's a total of £3,000 matched on the market just over. Uh, we've got two minutes down to the start, so we've got ever such slightly longer period of time to, to go through this recording. Now, the money's going to come very late again. Um, I'm not too sure where the prices are going at this point in time. However, I do know when it happens, I'm going to plug the gaps um, and when the large spikes come into the market, um, there's low, obviously low amounts of money in the market, lower turnover. I'm going to catch one of those spikes in a favourable position, um, and so I, I know instantly from that opening position, I'm in a favourable position. Haven't selected the ten pound stakes there, a little bit premature. You can see there's a little bit of money coming in on the back, the back side of the book for the favourite from the dark green volume bars on the Geek's Toy software. Um, but just as this develops, you can see a large stake there, and I'm jumping in front of that. Now, the reason I've jumped in front of that is because there's such a larger stake, and you can see this is genuine money that actually wants to be matched at this point in time. A little bit dubious, just in case it should get removed. Uh, the whole market could revert quite quickly. Lower stakes, obviously we're not overexposed. And there's a little bit of back money coming for the second there, which is going to counter against what we're doing, so nothing to get too excited about here as such, but... I'm offering my positions in the market ahead of time in favourable positions where I know that there is a genuine trend uh, in favour of where we're going. Now as activity picks up a little bit more there, I get a little bit more confident with what's going on. Sitting on the backside, you can see that genuine money is just pushing the price in one direction. It's pushing in our favour downward, uh, large stakes come in again and the lay position is already sat in the market open and waiting and again we pick up a few quid on £10 a click so nothing too exciting, not huge amounts of money to be made from this low turnover strategy but what you will see is a lot of the time I use this in different positions um, whilst I may be doing someone else, so something else so I could be trying to swing trade within the market and then again and again I will adjust my position making it more beneficial just by offering positions in the market outside of the traded available uh, so six quid nearly there from 10 pound a click stakes on to the next strategy which is short-term turnover bias slightly different strategy uh, the main difference is being you can use significantly larger stakes for this um, there's less offering in the market stands to reason when the market's more densely populated there's more unmatched money in the market there's less chances of getting a opportunistic fill uh, the good things being that you know you can stake a lot larger however stakes should always be in proportion to the amount of value that's on offer uh, the amount of bias which sort of comes down to the the one we've named it there the main problem with this strategy is it can feel more frustrating and sometimes you have to sit and wait a little bit longer as you'll probably see in the next four quick uh, recordings we're going to show you here on screen uh, one of them does go wrong left that in there very important just to show you that you know trading is about thinking in probabilities doing the right thing at the right time over the longer period it will play to your advantage so we've got a Flemington race here um, it's quite late on minute and a half down to the start there's not really a huge amount of bias in this market at this point in time highlighting the fourth there has got a little bit of a drift uh, you can see the dark green bars on the traded volumes denotes um, the recent money that's fallen into the market and I think if there is a little bit of bias here it looks like it's more likely that the favorite or the second favorite is going to shorten so we're going to 
offer our stakes in the market again initially, first of all, uh, potentially take a price too. And then when that bias flips a little bit with the added volume later down to the start, we're hoping to back at high price and lay at short price. So I've put a back bit in the market there just to get started, £40, £60, and um, a chunk of it gets matched and the price starts to dip in a little. And then I'm immediately I'm looking to lay off that bet back to the market. Uh, the whole time trying to gauge, I've just brought up the live video in the separate screen there, trying to gauge how much money is going to flow into the market, if this is really going to shift, um, and how long we've got down to the start of the race because it is extremely close to the start of the race looking at the timer on the left there at 24 seconds uh, so back bets have gone in the market lay bets are in the market very short um, space of value in the market there you may have heard of scalping previously elsewhere we've got lots of uh, videos on that in the video pack course also um, but this is very similar to scalping it's just highlighting the late volume that pours into the market and that extra bias um, in a directional format so we back and then we lay back to the market um, locking in a profit now if it bounces against us obviously we have to take a loss as you'll see shortly but this is frustrating like i said right at the start there just because you've got to sit in that big queue of money uh, there's 1900 quid on the lay side there and we're a little little lonely 40 quid uh, at the bottom Unfortunately, we matched just before the start. Nothing to get too excited about. It's bounced back again, and there's only £1.22 profit in that one. Um, so we just have to ride the rough of the smooth, and some will go further in our favour than others. So on to the next race, which is at Rose Hill, uh, race five. Uh, two and a half minutes down to the start. Looking at the market overall, looking at the graphs at the bottom, the Betfair charts, trying to see where the most recent volumes come into the market because recent volume and recent bets matched is always more important than historically over a longer period of time. A lot of people get sucked into the way of thinking that looking at it over a longer period of time is the way to suss where the price is going, but actually it's the most recent volume because that is what controls price movement with the supply and demand in the market. So it opened up for a very small £10 stake on the back side of the book there on the favourite. Um, it looks like there is a little bit of bias in terms of the dark volume, the dark green bars on the volume bars on the, the right there of the, the column. Uh, and I'm hovering over the lay position because I don't really know at this point in time. I may have to close that for a loss, um, 38 pence. But if it goes in our favour, then we're going to look at trading this a little bit more seriously. The second favourite started to drift a little. Um, there's no real clear-cut decision at this point in time. Um, I'm starting to see that momentum build, and you can see that, that spike that just dropped in there in our favour. That's always good to see, reinforcing our position. But, you know, is the bias going to continue, or is the bias going to bounce back against us? Uh, in this situation, it looks like it's going in our favour, although the market's been a little bit indecisive, and it's less clear-cut. And that is the problem sometimes with these type of markets that you see to use this kind of strategy, is because there's less clear-cut decision in the market. On the time that there is a very clear-cut opportunity and it's very obvious, it becomes a lot easier to trade and that's when you can use a lot larger stakes. This market just isn't one of those at this point in time. So we close up there, uh, six pence loss or five pence loss, uh, and it's gone against us. So we lost a few pence there, but it's, it's no great shakes because we got the opportunity to play the market, play it to our advantage. It could have taken off at one point and the other, um, and it didn't unfortunately in this instance. Last of all, they're just looking at banging a quick scout through the market on the, the third favourite, which has bounced against me. I think, to be honest with you, that's probably more boredom than anything else. On to the next race, um, and we've got Muffetville, uh, race number four. A um, minute and a half down to the start, and very obviously, look at the dark green bars on the right there um, of that column. The money has started to pour into the backside and the backside only in this uh, particular market so we go with the back we don't we're not too desperate to chase the price down and the thing that put me off more than anything with this one is there was a problem with the live video there you can see that it's just coming up black from from better the live streaming a bit frustrating um, open position there on the on the ladder and my attention is taken to the live video because i really want to see when this race is going off because if it goes off late we can play this trade a little bit further and you know it may even develop into some kind of swing at some point or another um, so mainly the live video is the problem in this instance. Thanks a lot, Betfair. Um, but anyway, look, you can see we're on, what, five quid uh, profit. We've caught that tick there. There's a lot of lay money resisting the price down at 4.2, 4.1. That's a common thing that happens a lot of time. Um, you know, community users on, on the website will know a lot about this, but there's a, the crossover points. Maybe I'll mention that a little bit later in this clip. 
but fighting with the live video you can see that there's a bias in the market close to the start high volumes turned over a total of 110,000 match on this market right now more opportunity to stake a little bit larger um, and take a very short space of value uh, short short price movement out of the market sorry taking value to put in our own in our own coffer so again still fighting with the live video really frustrating to see that in fact I've wasted I've wasted a fair amount of profit while I'm fighting with the live video there by the looks of things um, but the, the bias is in favour of the favourite shortening in this particular market um, what else there is to say I mean the second favourite's pretty weak the third's bounced around a little the fourth is pretty uneventful uh, marking take SP because I'm now worried we're actually past post time 20 seconds um, and our bets are matched and we're hedged up for a fiver there but that'll be a case of going on to the next one and hopefully getting the live video working properly so last example then four of four on this particular strategy um, we're then going to move on to probably the most important or the most lucrative strategy the third one um, but we've got the another race at Mafetteville here two minutes to the start and the market's starting to form starting to see where the money is flowing in and I'm weighing up where do I want to be in this market? Do I want to be back in? Do I want to be laying? And the second's gone a little bit of a drift there. In fact, that looks a little bit aggressive, that second uh, drift. Uh, the favourite is just it's staying where it is, although money's being matched at those prices. There's a little bit of money back in for it, nothing to get, get too uh, concerned with. But I think at this point in time, the play has to be on the second favourite. Also, we've gone to those crossover points, which I mentioned previously. So if I open a position down here at, say, 6.0, then there's going to be more benefit to the lay drifting than there is if it's to shorten because of the different prices in tick increment in the market. So 5.9 to 6 is a 0.1 difference, whereas 6 to 6.2 is a 0.2 difference. It's double. So we've opened a lay position at 6.2 there on the second favourite. A little bit more money's just piled in on the favourite, which makes things, um, yeah, it's a good sign for us, especially if that £2,000 gets dragged down because it repels the other prices in the market in the alternate direction um, because obviously everything's inversely proportionate, which is in our favour because we've got a lay position um, heading for the drift on this second. So a little bit longer and hopefully this will get moving. Uh, 40 seconds down to post and you can see I'm hovering over my neutral figure at 6.0 there I doubt it will go back to that point, but I'm I know that if it does I'm covered So I'm managing my risk. I'm putting the probabilities in my favor if the price drifts I get more profit if it comes back to me Then I don't lose anything so 20 seconds down to the start running out of time start thinking about filtering out those stakes Could continue further um, But obviously we know about the live video problems on this occasion when I was doing recordings and I've hedged up there for 10 seconds uh, before the start, which again is another black screen. Cheers, bet fair. So on to the third and final strategy, which is momentum swing trading. Uh, as the name suggests, we're looking for a swing in price. This is usually quite a popular strategy for people because you can make a large amount of money in one race, uh, particularly if you do it on larger stakes. Uh, it seems like it's more worth it, although really it's just a different discipline. Um, the reason for that is because it requires a different, bit of a different personality type, to be quite honest with you, a lot of the time, because you need to be more patient, you need to be willing to sit with a position open and let the market unfold, something that the majority of people struggle with. So we've got a screen, uh, screen recording on screen now. We've got two more for this particular strategy at Dorby, a lower quality race. Um, there's good reason for that because the best situations to catch a swing in price you can see a little bit of money just filtering into the market there. I think that's going in line with the general trend of, of where this price is likely to go. It's very thin very early on, so I want to make sure that I'm on for a very low stake and offset my position very early where possible. Um, but it's more important that you use this sort of strategy at the slightly lower grade quality races because there where the, sh the prices shift more, there's less information on offer, and it's more likely that a gamble will affect the market in those type of market conditions. If you think back to the very first point made throughout this tutorial, um, market conditions are absolutely paramount. So the active window is very similar um, to the other trading strategy types. Obviously we need activity to trade effectively. We can't trade anything if nothing's going on. And you see that this is a typical case of the price overreacting, bouncing back out, and then the real money's probably gonna push it back in again there. So we're backing up at that higher price. It's a good position to be getting into the market. Um, 
but the active window is very similar you just find that sometimes when there's a shift in price or the majority of the time when there's a shift in price it starts a little bit earlier on so it can be that a little bit more obvious um, you just need to give it the time to play out once you've made your decisive decision and, and gone into the market so um, we're not going to use too big a stakes too early on uh, just because the whole thing can flip as you've already seen in lower liquidity but now on the right hand side of the ladder for new alliance you can see that there's genuine money filtering in there we've got good match volumes at those prices the price is contracting the only downside is you know if more back money comes for the original favorite uh, cash and run that will have an impact on our position so getting close to the start hit the live video and miraculously it's working this time woohoo um, so we've got an open back position I'm watching horses going to the stalls and I'm seeing that you know some of them are already in there and it's a minute to post time now so we've not got too long to let this one play out although it's certainly moving it in one direction looking at the traded volume bars tells uh, the best story there for that one so what I'm not too sure of the prices we backed originally I know it was backing further up the top there and I've offset the position several times much like I did like I said there's an overlap between the different strategy types when the spikes come into the market just to ensure that we're sat on the right side of the potential move um, the swing in price offsetting it continuously and I'm just highlighting on the screen the resi resistance that's building up on cash and run at 2.86 which is what's halted our, our swing in price um, and there it goes again it starts to move in our favour once more when more money gen genuine money piles into the market unfortunately we've only got 18 seconds or so to the start now and the horses are already going in the stalls so that's pretty much this one over quite quickly uh, we'll move on to another recording on the screen now. So the next race at Dolby then, uh, race seven, two minutes to the start. Uh, we've got a small amount of time to make up our decision as to which runner we're looking to trade here. But it's a similar setup, similar type of environment. Uh, obviously the same race course, uh, low, low amount matched, 10K matched on this. Um, and we're looking for similar uh, activity in the market. Now, Price is at, what, 3.75 on Silent Flyer right now. Looks like a little bit of money's coming in for that, but I've not got a strong enough feeling on this to confirm um, any decision and open up a trade. You can see from the market overview over on the left that the market has just come to life. Now, this is when the, the live money comes into the market, the most, you know, the most active window for trading on the Australian racing, and it is very late. Um, we'll need the live video to confirm if we go... Uh, past post time but at this point in time I'm looking at back in silent flyer uh, the main worry is the alternate favorite on the left there and that is because if the price comes in on that one it's going to halt uh, what happens on the one we want to trade and vice versa so you don't want to see two short price favorites um, around about threes or three and a half um, competing against each other and look for a swing in price because they are working against each other within the market being very similar uh, positions in the pricing so we'll go with silent flyer you see that that spike and that flurry come in there around about the golden one minute before the start and we want to see this carry on and get going at this point in time the decision's not sewn up uh, I opened up for a very small stake 30 quid we've got on there uh, we got on at what 3.6 uh, and the price has started to contract we're down at 3.3 so far so it's happened very quickly like I said at the start there conditions are paramount um, and you know knowing what's going on and, and understanding why it's happening is more important than the actual trade itself that takes seconds I pulled up the live video and unfortunately some of the horses are already standing in the stall so it'd be nice if it went off a little bit late sometimes when you're in this position because it gives the market time to go in your favor you'll see that I've right clicked on the lay bets there and selected at SP Take, uh, at in play take SP and basically that means when the market goes in play the bets will be matched at the uh, Betfair SP if um, you've still got an open position and that's just because I don't want to go in play because the markets will be even thinner in play on the Australian horse racing um, so if I put in the footer there I'll show you the number of match bets so I'll increase that up to 8 so you can see what happened we backed at 5.5 cut the time sorry and we've laid off at 3.3, 3.25 and 3.5. All in all, uh, another very quick swing in the market. The conditions set it up for that. Again, on £10 a click, it's not too bad, £2.73. It could be far better, obviously, but these markets are great for just learning to trade. So the last thing to say, if you've got any other questions that you want to submit or you want me to ask about this video, please do in the comments down below. Um, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell if you want to see future uploads like this. 
Next up, we've got a video on betting strategy and another video screen recording of an Australian horse racing trade pre-race.